Hey, what is going on guys? I'm Mario and welcome to my new After Effects tutorial. So today I have a new episode about uh, my recent template and again, this will be sort of a breakdown, uh, sort of a tutorial also on how to create something like this. So let's check it out. So here we have particles coming in and forming a text. It can be logo or as well. And today we're gonna try and recreate this effect. So what I'm gonna do is, like always, I would like to first go uh, real quick, just as a small breakdown to, so I can show you what actually we'll be creating so that maybe it's easier to follow later on. So this is uh, the basic setup and I'm going to start with the files that are actually editable. So we'll not be using all of the stuff, but I will be showing how to recreate the effect. So I'm going to go into this, what I call text edit. So here we have our text and this is what we'll be creating first. So I would like to show you how to create this uh, so metallic chrome style text within After Effects. And then when we have our text, then we'll start working on our animations. Now we'll have three uh, different sort of animations here. So first time I would like to create like uh, sort of a bigger particles with, we'll be using CC ball action this time and once we have that set up, then we're gonna copy, uh, then we're gonna copy this uh, animation, then we're gonna create animation two from it. And here it's basically the same thing, except we're gonna, we're gonna change few settings into our CC ball uh, action settings. So after that, I'm just gonna go back. We'll create another one, which will be our third animation. And here again, we're gonna create a few more uh, adjustments into CC ball action, more scatter, different ball sizes. So as for example, you see here, we have ball size that is 80 and grid spacing uh, is one. And here we have different variations. So it's 50 and let's say two. And for example, when you go into animation two, here we have different settings again. So we have 50 and three, 50 and two, and mostly okay, 50 and two. And then if we go into animation and one, here we have different values. So we have uh, something like 70, we have something like 90, so that we have this sort of a randomness in, in particles so that doesn't look all, all the same. And we're gonna offset uh, the scatter values as well. And then later on, we're gonna add a mask. So if I move this away, so we're gonna add a mask that kind of reveals our text on top of our particles. So we have in the end this as a, as a result. Now, as this, what it's called content style edit, well, it's actually turning, uh, I just added a bit tint to add a bit more like a gold style look and added CC light sweep on top. So it's kind of adding a bit more uh, glow, I would say. And then we have our final setup where I added just adjustment layer uh, blur to kind of recreate depth of field since CC ball action doesn't have uh, depth of field parameters, I, I think. So uh, let's try and create then a new file. Oh, and finally, yeah, here it is. Just additional color correction on top. So this is the basic breakdown of what we'll be creating. So we can either create a new file or I can go simply add, put this into a new folder and I will call it preview and I can close all this for 
space standard. Okay, I closed one too many. And let's go and create a new composition. Now I'm recording again on part of my screen. So we have composition and then we have new composition. And here we are with our settings. Now, as for the duration, I'm going to use six seconds. And I can use, actually, I can use HDV, HDTV preset right here. And again, I can set this to six seconds like that. OK, uh, we can make this to fit. So the first thing that we're going to create is our text. So let's choose a type tool. And I'm using sensation radio. And I'm going to type same as in preview. So what actually we can do is composition settings and put it 960 by 540. So maybe I have 100% this time. OK, so I'll just adjust my text. I can click Command, Shift, and H to adjust the text like so. And this I will put to 0. So we have the text. So now let's do gradient. So the thing I'm going to do next is I'm going to go to layer styles and add gradient overlay. Now, now we're going to create this metallic style text effect. So let's go into layer styles. Let's open gradient overlay and let's go into colors, edit gradient. And here we're going to do a few adjustments. So this will go somewhere in the middle and it will have sort of this value. And here we're going to add a bit more brighter value like this, let's say, for now. So next thing I want to do is I'm going to duplicate this layer. But first, I want to call it Edit. And so let's just Command or Control D, so duplicate the layer. And I will call it child one. So the reason I call it child one is that I want to connect it to my edit. So I'll just go and select my text options visible here and my text options visible here. So what I want to do is I want to, uh, I'll click on this little stopwatch and pick web to source text. So this way I connect it child want to edit to this edit. So even though when I change something here, this layer will update. So the next thing I want to do is I want to go into my uh, stroke and fill settings. And this time I'm going to select stroke color. So let's choose this as none and go into a stroke color. And let's go into our layer styles, green and noble layer. And let's do reverse. So already we see some um, kind of effects going on. So the reason I chose stroke is actually the reason I chose stroke is that I want to have stroke on uh, sort of this first layer, but that it's with uh, with the gradient on. So let's go and edit this gradient. So here it should be much more contrast. So let's see what on top. I want to put more black in the middle, more white. Okay, maybe I can leave it for now like that. And then we can create another copy. So let's go and command control these two child one. 
And let's go in this settings, layer styles, gradient overlay. And let's go again into colors, edit gradient. But here we can go reverse set to off. And if we go to a stroke, we can set from three to four. And then we have something like, like this, maybe four is better. And also what we can do is hit S and maybe select this to say 99 so that we have this kind of 3D look. And make sure that this one is called job two. And again, let's go and connect it to our edit and make sure that it's correct. Okay, so we can now go back into our layer cells, gradient overlay, and edit gradient. So let's see what we can do here. Okay, so this will give us more white values. So let's put it like this. More darker. Here's white. Okay, and let's go back into our edit and adjust few layer styles there. So let's go to edit gradient and Just playing with the values to see what fits better and something like that. So let's go into child one, edit gradient again, and let's see what we can do here as well. this to 99 and let's put this to 98 and maybe let's put this to two three is actually good and maybe this to three or 98.5 just trying to find values actually 99.5 okay and let's go back to our edit play with these settings as well trying to have a good contrast Okay, so let's say I like the result of my text. I mean, this maybe this in the very bottom is not as necessary as I think it is. Or maybe we can put it at a bit more subtle. So there we have our text. And I'm gonna edit this. So it's 
so that I know that this is where I edit my text. So now when we go and hit our edit layer, we can call it main text and then we have all updated. Okay, so now when we have that, let's go and put it into a new comp and I will call this, actually we don't want to delete it, so I will call this content today, I cannot write, content, content style. So what we do here actually is we can add, I, I need, I need effects here. So we can play with the settings a bit more right here. So what I want to do is I want to go to generate and CC light rays, actually not light rays, but uh, generate slight sweep. So this will kind of give us this light, light source across. So a few settings here, uh, edge thickness, I want to set to zero, edge intensity, I want to set to zero, and sweep intensity, I want to add a bit of value and this with not as strong. So now we have something like this. And this I want to put here in the, in the middle. So let's play with sweep intensity a bit. I would say that you put it to 90 as maximum. 100 is a bit over, so maybe even lower. Something like, like this. Now, additionally, what I did in the preview, I added uh, we can add color correction, tint, and then added a bit this kind of goldish, goldish color. And then what I did next is I duplicated this text edit. So let's just control D to duplicate it, the command D. And again, I will hit S, remove this uh, little chain here and put it to, let's say 99 and remove my tent so that we still have kind of silver in the background and kind of gold on front. So additionally what we can do is duplicate our CC light sweep so I'll just command the control D and this time I'm going to put it somewhere around here and the choose a bit different color let's say something a bit more contrast like that and then sweep intensity and with something like this so that we have kind of two values. We have original value, then we have kind of highlight value and then we have additional color value. So something like that, let's say. Okay, and let's go to the back layer and delete our sweep because we don't we don't need that. So we have our kind of metallic glow uh, gold style text. Now the next thing is to do, to do with this content style. We will put it into a new comp, and now we'll start playing with the particles. So when we go and add, let's say, simulation CC ball action. Now here we have scatter, and if we go to all sides, 50, grid spacing, increase to something like one, we have our animation. But the thing is that I wanna do here is I would like to create a mask, actually three or four masks, and then later I would like to offset this animation in time. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go to ellipse tool and I will just put my title action safe on and I will create here my first mask. So this will be the first layer. So I'll just go quickly in a preview. Maybe I didn't explain it there. Um, let's go into animations, animation one, and I'm going to
remove all this and so here we have one animation actually here we have one mask which if I compare it to the other layers so you can see that here scatter and rotation have different different values I'll actually need to show these two and hide these so when it kind of go, goes in the point is that they all have this offset and animation so I hope that makes sense so if I hit U to select all the keyframes so you see all start at one point but these at the very uh, very beginning they come in kind of kind of like and this is what I want to do with this mask so we'll need a few of those so we can later offset our animation okay so let's go and create a few more masks so I'm gonna do is duplicate this layer and what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna duplicate this mask as well so I can hide this first one and let's do select this uh, first one and let's click on this yellow line and what I'm gonna do is just grow the mask to something like this and make sure that my second mask is set to subtract so now we have something like this so maybe first mask or second mask we can go and control shift H and maybe put it to minus one so that we get rid of this small little circle okay so the next thing we're gonna do the same thing so I'm gonna create another duplicate and let's go select our mask and let's just screw the mask and make sure that I want to see let's say And let's repeat the process. So I'm going to duplicate it again. So now we have Okay, so now I can Close this. Now I created four masks here. What you can do is you can create even, even more if you want to more to have more randomness. But for now, this will this will work. So what we can do next is we can animate our CC ball action. So let's say that scatter can be something like 15. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the scatter to 15 go somewhere like to three seconds and select to zero what i can do also is i can duplicate this layer go inside inside the masks and delete all the masks so this way i can actually see what's going on and um, the next thing i want to do is i want to animate rotation so Let's put it to zero, go to somewhere like here, set a rotation keyframe, go back to the beginning and set this to one. So now we have this kind of rotation. So if we go and let's say preview, we have something like that. But what I want to do is I'm going to hit U and I'm going to create all this with F9 to easy ease. So we have more smooth animation and then later we can just copy copy uh, the keyframes what we need so we have a scatter we have a rotation and we have our final final text okay uh, the next thing I would like to do is I can copy these values so I'll just 
command C and simply paste it. Well, I'm on the beginning, just paste it on all the keyframes, close this and show, show this on. Now, even though that I paste the keyframes, still some values are are off so we're gonna fix that now so if I select only this layer if I hit you so we do have our animation but we need to make sure that if we forget to check our effect that that is on as well so let's go here as well And now we have the same thing that we have in the beginning with, with this file. The only difference is now if we select all these and so I'll select all of them, hit U. And if I take the keyframes somewhere like here, and let's set keyframe here, and let's set keyframes here, then we're gonna have sort of offset in time to something like like this, but we need to make sure that it's kind of seamless looking. So we have something like this. So now that we have our first animation set up, what we can do is we can create another one and again play with the more randomness. Like, like I said, now here what we can do is we can select the ball size to be a bit bigger, grid spacing also a bit bigger or smaller, and then we have more variation and there you will see the variation but that's something that we can easily fix la later on so let's use like this and let's take the last one 50 let's say two but that's something that e it's easily fixed later on and let's Okay, what I would like to do is that a bit more closer together, maybe. Something like that. So let's preview quick. Okay, now. There are a few other things that we can do. So we can do it all, all in one layer and then later on we can fix that as well. So what we can do is go into our curves and play with the rotation values. So let's go here and let's select this keyframe. Select the rotation value, something like that. Again, hit U here, select this keyframe and select that as well. And let's do the same thing for the last one. Alternatively, you could you do, do it to, to just one layer and then copy it, but this way maybe we'll have more randomness also. So let's see it now. So we have something like that and we'll select all of them and pushing a bit more inside. Okay, so now we have our first animation and I'm gonna call it animation one. And again, I'm going to duplicate this animation one, control D, and I'm going to call it animation two. So let's open our animation two. And here we're going to do a few more adjustments. Now, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to offset all these a bit more out. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to add more scattering. So instead of 15, I'll add 25. Let's say here 25 and let's say here 
let's see, 35. And maybe here we can, let's see, put two and 80. 80 and then maybe one or 80. Let's say two and 80. So we have a bit more randomness here. Uh, 70 maybe, ball size is 60. Or maybe one and 70. It's all about now playing with the settings to achieve a bit more randomness. And finally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these two and put them into a new comp. Six is okay, and single composition. Use dimensions from animation two, okay. And then we have our animation. Actually, we can call this main build because here we're gonna build all of those together. Okay, so our animation one is a bit too similar to animation two. And especially in this point. So let's play with these two values here. So let's say put it to 40. And put it to one. And here, let's say put it to one as well. And decrease the ball size in here. Let's go and put it to two. Okay, it's all about playing with the settings and experimenting a bit. So, so let's go and create a new animation, which will be animation three. Actually, I don't want to delete it. I'll call animation three. And in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a bit more scatter. So instead of 35, I'll add 40. And in the end, I'll add maybe even 50 so that we have more scatter variations. So here, let's go to 25. Here, go to 35. Okay, and let's go back to our... And maybe here, actually, I want one. Our main build, and let's add animation three in the scene. So now we have really noisy animation. I'm going to go to animation three again, and I'm going to offset all my four. Masks to something like this so that this layer comes in last animation three with the small particles comes in last. Okay, so now we have our basic setup. Now, the final thing now that we need to do is we go into main setup, let's into animation one. We have our, show this. And just this three layers. Now we have our final mask reveal. So this is the thing that we're gonna do next. So let's go into our main build. And let's go into our animation one. And here we're gonna simply uh, bring back our first layer, delete ball action. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new mask. And let's just toggle action safe. Let's create a new mask that will be something like this big. And we can offset it to somewhere like here. We can now go into our mask expansion, put it way, way down. And then as it reveals, we need to reveal our text. So the process will be something like that maybe even bigger. And mask further, we can also put it just a bit so it's not so sharp. 
something like that. Uh, finally, what I'd like to do is if I select all these four layers, which have our ball action, I will hit T to reveal opacity. And what I want to do is simply hide the opacity once the text is real. So somewhere like here so that we don't see small dots right here in the ending. So something like that. Okay, so the next thing what we can do is we can duplicate this layer. And actually this one can be our add blending mode. And then finally that we have our normal blending mode. It just gives sort of a small shock wave, I would say, to it all. Because maybe I can duplicate it so you can see it a bit better. So we have this like white stripe passing and then we have a final text reveal. So if we preview it, we have something like that. Even we can offset this a bit more inside. Something like this. Okay, so let's do our next step, which would be adding a camera. So let's go and create a new camera. I will hit OK. And what I'm going to do now, since CC ball action kind of works in a strange way, I would say, uh, we'll actually duplicate the same camera for all three animations. So now we have a camera. And the thing I'm going to do next is I'm going to add a null object, which will be our dolly. So what we'll have as our camera position, animated from, let's say, here to outside. Now we have a kind of small technical issue. Now, CC ball action by itself is kind of 3D layer. So if you go and move the camera around, it will actually kind of feel 3D. So what we need to do is simply all this three layers that we have, we need to activate them as 3D layers as well so that we don't have that, that issue. And now we have our camera zoom out. And the next thing I want to do is I'm going to hit my dolly with uh, Let's say I'm just going to hit P to reveal Dali position. And I'm going to transfer it to my camera. So actually that camera is connected to Dali so that when we go hit a keyframe here and make sure that it's 3D as well and move it a bit more in, then we have sort of this effect. And I'm going to also make sure that it's F9, so that we make easy ease, and let's make sure that actually it's let's see how it works. So this will be our animation, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna select these two. I'm gonna copy, and I'm simply gonna paste them here into animation two and into. animation three. So now we have that. So when we go into main build, we have this. Okay, so our animation one is for some reason on screen, so let's put it back to normal. But also if it's on screen, it gives kind of interesting result with the background. So like that. But let's put it back to normal. Okay, uh, now the next thing. Now, like I said, uh, we kind of 
go and fake the uh, depth of field. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new adjustment layer. And this will be my blur. And let's go and add blur and sharpen. And let's add camera lens blur and make sure that repeat edge pixels pixels is on. So we're going to put this to 15 or something. No, maybe even maybe 10. And now the thing what we can do to kind of get better, better scene is to add glow. So we can go to our animation one and let's go into stylize and let's add a glow. And let's add really big glow, something like 20. Or even bigger. And we can copy our glow to to all of our all of our layers. Let's hit blur. And now what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna select ellipse tool. And I'm going to choose one point that I would like to have my focus. So if I go either to subscribe, subtract or invert it and hit MM to play with my expansion a bit. So I can create some kind of focal focal point. And the thing is, I'm going to set a keyframe on the beginning from 10 to let's say somewhere like here to zero so we're kind of faking that depth of field and let's create a new solid which will be a background i hit ok and let's go to uh, create new adjustment layer and this will be our color correction so let's go to color correction and let's go to curves and we can add a bit more contrast. Let's see how that looks. Okay, um, and lastly, so if I go into my preview and where we have my render and let's go into main setup. Or is this the main setup? Render, okay. Now here we, we have something kind of similar. Uh, but we also have this optical flares. Now, this is completely optional, so you don't have to, you don't have to use it. So, but it kind of gives a bit more glow to to the text itself. So, if you own optical flares, you can go to new solid, and I'm going to call this optical flares. And let's go into our effects panel, choose optical flares, and from the options, I'm just going to select glow solo it hit okay and then let's put it to screen and i'm going to choose a position let's say here put it way down and choose kind of this color then you will have this additional uh, glow on your text but what we can do next is we can go and play with our background a bit so it's not purely dark. So let's go into generate ramp and let's just put it to like deep ramp scatter on something like that. And additionally, maybe we can color correction. Let's see what we can do. Stylize more, add more glow. Hmm. 
And maybe if we go into our text edit and just scale it to 135, let's say. And go back to our, this is our whole render. Then here we'll have our text. Now, additionally, as for color correction, we can go into our blue channel, add a bit blue, go to our red channel and take a bit green, just a bit. And this, this should be then our final, final render. So I won't go any more into, into details and to fine tuning now. This is now uh, more like preference based. You can play with uh, different color variations, color values, blur values, camera position, and so on and so on. But this is the main concept behind this file and this is how I, how I did it. So this would be alternative to, let's say, Tropco Particular, which would uh, which will also look, look cool, but I wanted to create something without any plugins, and it was this was a fun, uh, fun kind of project to to play with, and this would be our main main result. Huh? So I also have here in in my preview under assets, I have like. Uh, clouds so this is what I added as a, as a background and I have pre-rendered particles if I had to screen and then we have small particles flying around so I just can duplicate them a few more times so it's kind of better shown so that it feels that there are some kind of remaining particles still still floating around and, and like usual under color correction if I go into RGB and play with the contrast, I sometimes like to use unsharp mask, so it simply adds a bit more attention to, to detail at the very, at the very last, uh, at the very end of the render. So uh, now when we have our project ready, uh, you can always prepare it also for render and render, render it out or add audio to it and so on. Now, as for the project files, since this is part of, uh, part of the template, uh, I won't be including, but what I will be including is this pre-rendered particles and clouds PNG. So you can get as if you don't want to uh, spend money on buying a template, so you can recreate your own uh, logo reveal using this tutorial and you can add same clouds and same particles into the scene. So that's kind of alternative to it all. Okay, so a lot, in the end, I would just like to say again, uh, thank you for watching. I hope this story was useful. You found it useful anyway. And I see you then next time. Thank you for watching.